latest release of Photoshop introduced some amazing new features, one of which is 3D printer support. So if you have a local 3D printer, something like a MakerBot, you can print directly to that MakerBot from Photoshop. And Photoshop will even generate the scaffolding infrastructure to support your object during the printing process. If you don't have a local 3D printer, that's okay too. Adobe has partnered with Shapeways, uh, which is a 3D printing service, so that you can now generate your prints for Shapeways directly from Photoshop. So you can edit your objects inside of Photoshop, generate the print, it will kick you out directly to Shapeways where you can upload it and then create your models. I want to show a couple examples that I've created uh, using 3D printing support in, inside of Photoshop. First one is some text. Um, this was basically just a, a regular text layer which I extruded into a 3D object and added a cube, stretched out the cube to make a base so that all the letters are connected so that we now have um, essentially like a little nameplate that will stand up on its own. This was modeled and created entirely inside of Photoshop and then sent to Shapeways. A couple days later, I ended up with this in my mail. Another object that I have here is a dragon. Um, this was not modeled inside Photoshop. Photoshop can read um, 3D model, many of the common 3D model formats. Um, I downloaded this one online. It's actually a dragon from a video game. I uh, made a couple minor changes to it, just adjusted the scale. Um, because there are some really thin parts of it, like the wings are, are about a millimeter thin. Um, just had to, to scale up a couple pieces of it so that it could successfully be printed. And then um, sent it off to Shapeways, and again, a couple days later, I got this in the mail. Really, really happy with how this turned out. Let's take a look at Photoshop to see how you can get started with 3D printing on your own. Now we're inside of Photoshop. I've already got my basic nameplate or plaque uh, open here, and we can view the, the 3D object. I can rotate around the canvas so you can see it is a true 3D model. Let me go ahead real quick and just switch the window to the 3D workspace so we'll bring up all of the 3D properties, we can view the 3D layers, and we can see a little bit more about our 3D object. So as I mentioned, this is a true 3D object and I just want to show you how I created this. And this could be useful for creating any kind of custom nameplate or any kind of custom 3D object from a text layer. So I'm switching over to a new document where I've already created some text. And I want to just make sure that my text layer is selected and do new 3D extrusion from selected layer. So I'm going to do that. And we can see just by performing that extrusion command, we now have a 3D object. And I can adjust the depth of this or the width of it, the size of it, however I want. But um, just to keep this simple, I'm going to now go ahead and add a support base to it. So what I want to do is just add cube. And I did this by doing a right click on the layer and select add cube, which we'll use the default size. And we can see that we now have a cube. Let me select just the cube and we'll move it around. So it's just below the letters. And then we can use the 3D controls. So I'm actually scaling it in the Y direction. Let me move it back up. Now let me rotate my scene a little bit to see how the sizing is. So I'm going to go back and select the cube again. And now I want to stretch it in the Z direction so that the base is slightly larger than my letters. And I'm going to move it just a little bit more. Now let me select my scene again, and I can rotate the scene. You can see that the base is larger than the letters, and there's a little bit of overlap between the letters and the base itself. Now let me select the cube and stretch out in the X direction so that the base is as large or larger than the letters. And this way we'll have a base that really fits the size of the letters. And I'll select the scene again so we can rotate the scene and we can see that we now have letters that have a support base and I've just quickly put this together. Now if I want to print this, all that I have to do is select the scene, go to the 3D print settings, and here I can either select a local printer, which I don't have a local printer right now, um, but if I did, I, there's support for 3D Systems Cube, MakerBot Replicator 2, uh, MakerBot Replicator 2X, and ZCorp Full Color. Or you can export an STL file. An STL file is a file that can be used for a 3D printing service. 
what I'm going to do is select the shapeways.com uh, print target, and this brings up a dialog and properties that allow you to adjust your model for printing to Shapeways. So I can view my object, which I have here. The default material was the alumide material, which is a plastic that has um, flecks of metal in it, so it gives it kind of an aluminum metallic look. I can choose anything from plastic to polished silver or, um, you know, transparent. It, it all depends on what kind of material you want to select from Shapeways. Each material has different attributes and properties, so it's important to check with Shapeways to see what are the properties of the material that you've selected. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select Coral Red, Strong and Flexible Polished. You can get a preview of what this is going to look like uh, after the printing process. We can scale it to print volume because the print volume has to match or be smaller than the actual volume of the printer. And once you've got your object the way that you want it for printing, all that you have to do is go to the 3D menu and select 3D print. And what this is going to do is it's going to merge all the, the 3D objects into a single object and it's going to create a file that you can then upload to shapeways.com to kick off your print. This will take just a few minutes. And now we can do a 3D print preview. So you can see the object, you can rotate it, you can see exactly what's going to be sent to the 3D printing service. Um, this price, it estimates based upon the material cost, the size of your print. Um, this one is actually, that I've selected here, is actually significantly larger than what I actually printed, but I was just doing this very quickly. Um, but all that you have to do is hit export, and we can go ahead and save this as extruded text. Hit save, and it's going to export 3D. And direct us to Shapeways, where we can then go ahead and, if you have an account, you can go ahead and log in, or you can create a new account. You upload your 3D design, and then you can walk through the actual 3D printing process. Now let's take a look at the Dragon model. I downloaded this model from the web, pulled it into Photoshop, and I was able to preview what, what it would look like. I had to do a couple scaling changes just on, um, in particular, areas of the wings that were very, very small, and there were some areas along the talons and along the teeth. But once I got it uh, sized correctly, I didn't make any other changes. And, and when I sized it, I, I made changes to the entire model, not to specific parts of it, but I just scaled the entire thing. Um, I select the white strong and flexible polished. And once I was ready, again, just go to 3D and 3D print. So you can model your... So you can use Photoshop to create your 3D models, or you can use any other 3D modeling software and pull it into Photoshop and use Photoshop to have a very easy, very simple printing process. Now let's take a look at one other object uh, that I am working on. So I haven't actually gotten this one from Shapeways Printing Service yet, but this is a iPhone cover that has a, the Adobe A logo in it as negative space. This was designed using the exact same techniques that fellow evangelist Paul Traney used in his tutorial. Um, see the video, which I will link to below. And um, yeah, I, I, I made some changes to an actual model, an existing model, pulled it into Photoshop, made sure everything was the correct size, uh, selected the material, and again, just go to 3D and 3D print. And that's 3D printing inside of Photoshop. Um, Literally, you can model and print anything. As long as your imagination can come up with it, you can turn it into a model. You can then turn it into an actual physical object. This opens up possibilities for far beyond just a digital or print composition to something that can be a sculpture or it can be functional. Um, you can even create machine parts. 3D printing is being used in everything from medicine where people are using it to recreate new joints for joint replacement to manufacturing where if you're creating custom parts for objects that you're manufacturing to art, like I said, sculpture, jewelry. Um, it has a lot of possibilities. So um, if you haven't looked at it already, check out Photoshop CC and uh, start playing with 3D printing yourself. It's highly addictive and a lot of fun. Thanks.